All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar Wednesday for March. I can't believe it's already March. It was warm outside when I was walking into the office this morning. I was like, wow, I don't need this jacket that much anymore. So that was kind of exciting. And so looking forward to some spring activity, especially the daylight. So I'm a night owl, so I'm glad that like it's still daylight at like 730. So hope that is good for you, too. And so anyway, I just wanted to tell you how excited we are about our webinar Wednesday today with Rochelle Veteran, our um, leadership and volunteer development specialist. She's an awesome colleague here in our office. And so we can't wait to hear about what she's going to share with us today. But as an advertisement for next month, um, we're actually going to have webinar Wednesday on a Friday just because April gets kind of busy and it, that's just kind of what work, works with schedules. This will go out in the newsletter, which comes out on Friday. So April the 19th of Friday, or 11 a.m., Erin Bain, and she works with American Income Life Insurance. And for some of y'all that are new that may not know, but we have a insurance policy for 4-H here. We hold for the statewide 4-H um, program for volunteers and enrolled members. So if something happens, you can file the insurance. Anyway, we'll learn more about that later, but here's the but. If you have some specific questions, scenarios, this is your great time to get those answered. And if you want to email me a scenario or a question, Erin asked me that yesterday. So she wants to start collecting um, questions and scenarios. So um, you can send that to me if you have that um, you know, ready to go. I would love to hear from you. So April 19th at 11 a.m., Erin Bain. And then uh, we'll have one more in May and then we'll take the summer off for webinar Wednesdays. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to... Um, Rochelle. Awesome. Thank you. I, uh, all of a sudden my spring, speaking of spring, Megan, I think I'm getting my spring allergies. I had to turn my camera off there for a second. Um, well, thank you so much for jumping on. I know you have a lot going on out there across the communities. And one of the things that we talked about, and you've probably seen me put in the newsletter a million times, has been these new 4-H volunteer um, lesson plans, activities, PowerPoints, and uh, Megan and I talked about really wanting to explore these and share them with you because there's so many great ideas and little lessons and things you can pull out to do with different volunteers or with your even your advisory councils. Uh, Sue Kwame was doing them, uh, going to be using some of these little hands-on activities with her 4-H ambassadors, like some of the leadership skills at one of their retreats. So these are kind of some go-to things you can use for different um, different pieces. Some of the activities even work with, of course, your 4-Hers too. So um, these were developed nationally um, and we wanted to just kind of highlight them because I think they're an underused resource for all of you. Last spring at 4-H spring training, we kind of dug into the communications activities um, at spring training because those were the only ones that were finished, but now they are all finished. Um, so we just wanted to show them to you. With that, Megan has, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna drop in the chat and maybe Megan, you did too. We have lots of, uh, I have some handouts for you and an agenda um, that we can, um, we're gonna put in, as it's a Google Drive that you should all be able to get to that actually has the agenda with all of the hot links to the materials on it. Um, and Megan, drop that in right now. Um, there's handouts, materials, a, a two-page summary of VR Casey and these lesson plans and activities. Um, and then in a minute, I'm gonna have her actually drop in the VRKC website. But for now, we're gonna watch a little video exploring that. But the million dollar or maybe billion dollar question is how do you provide some fun, useful training for your 4-H volunteers in 20 minutes or less? Somebody told me 10 minutes or less the other day. So that's what's great is you can kind of pick and choose what you wanna use out of all of these. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute so Megan can, um, share the highlight video for all of you to watch quickly, and then we'll dig into these um, materials. Thanks, Megan. Volunteers play a critical role in the quality of the 4-H program. What are the basic skills that volunteers need to be successful in their role? How can we as 4-H youth development staff work with volunteers to grow and develop these qualities? The Volunteer Research, Knowledge, and Competency Model helps us to identify the key skills that volunteers feel they need to serve the 4-H youth development program. Research was conducted with volunteers and staff 
to narrow down the skills needed into six broader categories called domains. The domains include, in order of importance and frequency of use, communications, organization, 4-H program management, educational design and delivery, positive youth development, and interpersonal characteristics. Within each domain are some specific skills and characteristics that were identified as key for the volunteer role. We encourage you to explore each of the six domains of the VRKC and the resources that you can utilize as short grab-and-go lessons, training materials, newsletter inserts, creating local needs assessments, and more. Great, thank you. That voice on there is Don, uh, who is the volunteer specialist in Wisconsin. And one of the things that I love when I was an agent or in the county, I always remember needing those things for the newsletter or things to pull out for um, for uh, the newspaper, if you still have a weekly uh, paper newspaper. Um, so she's right, you can use some of those as newsletter items too to highlight different things. So I was always looking for those. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again here and we'll get started. Hopefully um, you located the Google Drive again and maybe Megan, you can drop that into the chat one more time. Um, my PowerPoint, this PowerPoint is in there for you to be able to follow along if you want to. Um, and then uh, there's also kind of an agenda and then some of the resources we're going to just touch on quickly just so you have all of that. And it's open to the public, so it should be okay. All right, well, as Don mentioned on that video quickly, we really, and we're not gonna dig into the research much, even though I'm a research nerd. Uh, we These lessons were developed after we asked both agents or educators in the field and our volunteers themselves about what skills do volunteers really need to be successful in delivering 4-H programs? Because we always say well-trained volunteers are the ones that keep coming back. If they can feel confident in what they're doing, um, again, we're having the conversation about what trainings we require beyond youth protection. Sue Millinder and others are helping us kind of design that collectively. But these are some of those, those basic skill building pieces that you could do after a 4-H council meeting or if you're having one of those retreats. Um, because those competent volunteers really do get, help us give the best possible experience to our 4-H members. And that's where we link in the 4-H thriving piece. So again, these are research-based. They were identified as the skills and knowledge our volunteers need to be successful out there. And again, you just, they're wonderful ones that you can kind of pick and choose from. So Megan's gonna drop in the, um, the actual, I have that website there in case you're printing these out and um, don't have, it's a long one to type in, um, but we're gonna drop that in so you can actually look at those VARKC materials and we are going to take a minute to explore them. So I have you jumping around, it's gonna be interactive today. So the categories, as was mentioned on the video, is really um, some lessons and some hands-on activities about how volunteers can communicate the most effectively with the, the youth in their 4-H clubs, with their parents. Um, what kind of organizational skills do they need to be a volunteer? I know some of the, um, challenges we hear from 4-H parents are that maybe the volunteers aren't communicating the most effectively um, with their clubs or with their shooting sports groups or animal group um, judging teams, things like that. And there's some ways for volunteers both to, to build their skills individually, but then also to ask for help. Like, how do you ask for help as a volunteer and assistance? Because it isn't just one person. We talk about like a three leader club model where there's more than one volunteer involved and that the parents help with things too. And we're gonna actually look at that piece. For each program management, that covers everything from just how do you run a good 4-H uh, program. What are the things that you need? And if you dig into that one, or we're going to highlight at 4-H spring training um, in April, uh, there's actually some pieces like our North Dakota club meeting model is actually a, how do you run a 4-H club is actually highlighted in there. North Dakota is mentioned in that 4-H program management one. So that's kind of fun. And Megan and Adrian and Sue and um, 
Diane and Carla Mickle, we're all going to be highlighting some of those hands on activities from the program management piece at spring training this year. So you can actually do them and then be able to take them to your volunteers to use so that you can kind of experience them. Educational design and delivery, how do they help in partnership with their um, 4-Hers to design the best 4-H experience they can? What are some tips and tricks? Then that positive youth development piece is everything that Megan and Caroline Holman and all of us cover related to um, providing that um, 4-H thriving or that really good experience in a 4-H for each program, what does that take? And then some of those interpersonal characteristics. Now, these are the parts that when there's conflict that arises, here's how you can build those skills. How do you build skills with your volunteers to get along more effectively with their parents, um, to embrace diversity? They're just, it covers the gamut. So again, we're gonna just cover those briefly. So what I'd like you to do, since I don't wanna talk this whole time, is we're gonna just do a quick scavenger hunt. So I'd like you to grab a sheet of paper if you have one next to you. And we'll maybe drop Megan that one more time that, um, and you should be able to see these slides too. Drop that link to the, the VRKC materials or that website. And I'm actually gonna stop sharing here. But there's three things I'm gonna have you do with the scavenger hunt quickly, just individually. You're gonna list one topic from your the communications fact sheets. You're gonna list one activity from the organizational skills domain activities. So we're, I'll show you this on the website. And then take a look at that positive youth development PowerPoint. So I'm gonna stop sharing this quickly and then get to maybe, we'll see if I get, can get there. Share my screen again. It helps if I talk to myself when I do this. I don't know if that works for all of you too, but this is that website that hopefully all of you are on right now. If not, just take some time to get there. And this is where all those resources and lessons are located. I, on a side note, there's that video that we just showed you. And on a side note, I think that we need to, this was all things that were kind of done for free because we all work together collectively and collaboratively and everyone kind of um, just kind of works on things together, but we didn't have a fancy graphic designer. Um, so it's hard to even discover that each of these different um, domains or different sections has a hot link. So I almost think we need to make these different colors. I need to talk to them about that. But when you click on that hot link and you can try doing that, it comes up with under that topic, like communication, it comes up with these different fact sheets for you to give to your 4-H volunteers when you do training, which is wonderful just some real quick handouts. And they're usually just two or three pagers for like quick fact sheets about what does it mean to be a good listener and how do we practice that really? So that was just one topic. So there's all these fact sheets and that's where those newsletter articles can come in that you can send out to your volunteers. There's even a technology fact sheet. And then there's a whole set of PowerPoint slides for you. If I open this up, it's actually a whole set of all, covering all those different topics that you can kind of pick and choose. And we're gonna highlight those in a little bit, but it they're actually PowerPoints for you to take and use. You don't have to develop them yourself, which I absolutely love. And then at the very bottom are activities. So just some, these are those hands-on quick activities you can do with your volunteers. So you give them one of the fact sheets, you might highlight the things you're talking about on a PowerPoint, but these really are where the rubber meets the road with those different fun activities that you can do with your volunteers. This paper tearing exercise, this clip in a pocket, lots of people like, like those different hands-on activities. So if you go back, each of the different topics, whether it's organization skills, program management, they all have all of those resources, like this program management one, same thing, fact sheets, the PowerPoint slides, and those activities. So with that, I've talked enough, and what I'd like you to do is um, do a little scavenger hunt, take a sheet of paper, and find these three things for me. 
And then as we go through them, we're going to share them in the chat. So I'm going to set my timer for five minutes and have you get started. Does anybody have any questions about that before I send you off to do a little exploration on your own? If not, then I'm going to set the timer and we'll go for five minutes and be ready to drop your answers um, in the chat when we come back. I should have some kind of music like do, 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 but I'll just be quiet so you can focus. Five minutes. We have two minutes left to keep finding the answers to these three things. I'll be quiet so you can do that. Let us know if you have any questions. I hope you're having fun exploring.
30 seconds more. I'll have you guys are working fast. I'll have you wait and we'll do a waterfall chat or kind of put our answers in one at a time in the chat. I wasn't very clear about that. So thanks to those of you who have already done that, but we'll wait and do each answer because some people have different ones, I think. All right. That was our five minutes. Thanks for being engaged, all of you. All right. I've been busy. So for the first question, what were some of those? Some of you put those in there. One communication topic in that listening skills one. The simple listen. All right. So that one, reducing distractions, creating silence. I thought the mindfulness, those were excellent. Reducing distractions, all things that are important as you look. And I'm just going to pull over that PDF here so you can see those all those listening skills handouts just even you could just touch on even one of these as tips for your 4-H volunteers in your newsletter or in one of your trainings that simple listen convey interest mindfulness silence offering advice I was I always have trouble not offering mm -hmm. advice <laughs> and who knows if mine is very good so I have that's one I have to work on all right, for that second one, those of you that haven't, we have some new messages. Organizational skills. What were some of the activities that you could do or that you kind of liked out of those organizational skills? Let's just check our messages here. The service grid idea, Megan, awesome. Delegating tasks to parents with sticky notes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the tasks of parents, those are the things I think that might be your first lesson you do. And I actually dropped that in the Google Drive because I wanted you to see that one. That's the thing we hear from our 4-H volunteers as they get overwhelmed. There's certain things they love to do, but there's certain things that other parents or caregivers might have better ideas. How do you spend your time? Yes. Um, all of those, great. Developing the 4-H meeting agenda and breaking those down. So yes, all these resources are tucked away and hidden in these great things. That annual plan. Awesome, Lindsay, that you do that. They never, yep. Those are all great resources to dig into. So I'm glad you found all of those. And then finally, what pages was that PowerPoint or what slides were the ones about um, empowering others? Yes, slide 30. So the thing is we dug this dug into these as volunteer or as volunteer as as specialists and I'm just going to pull up oh I think I must I must have closed that powerpoint but um is that there's a lot in those powerpoints but if you just take take that one chunk like of of empowerment of others and that one in the positive youth development one is about you empower our volunteers empowering their youth to be engaged just pulling out that section 38 or 30 through 38 to teach just that piece is all you need to do. Again, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you have. Yes. So um, very important. Just really quick. You don't have to, they don't, doesn't take much prep because you have to look through them, of course, but they're all right there for you. Well, thanks for kind of looking through those pieces with me. Um, and as you explore those PowerPoints, then that's what I just wanted to walk through this delegating tasks under the organizational skills. One of the top priorities are things we hear from our 4-H volunteers to parents, or I would say grandparents in our 4-H club, we have lots of grandparents involved or other caregivers or like guardians, depending on who, who wants to be that caring adult for that youth at the club meeting, at the shooting sports meeting, at the um, livestock judging, whatever that is. So with each of these PowerPoints, as you can see, there's some things that you can take and just present, you know, feel free to kind of edit if you think it's too much, but they just include a lot of those key pieces to cover. So what's, what's the good thing about delegating? I was talking to one of our well, volunteers who's been around for a while, and she just was saying she gets overwhelmed having to be the one to do everything. And I was like, you know, you don't have to be the one to do everything, right? And she's like, I know, but I feel bad asking people. I'm like, actually, you have so many skilled parents and caregivers in your club. 
that can really take over and do some of these things so kids learn from other caring adults or other youth in their group too. So um, it does help. There's a lot of benefits to it. So they need to see that side. And then how do they effectively delegate? So again, the, this module just kind of walks through those pieces, um, some good quotes to go with it. It just really helps build your skills or builds those interactions in your club or community for each meetings too. Then what's nice is you can personalize each of these and add your title, your name, your email. So it's all ready for you to go. And I love the new graphic designs that they have. You can add, add your own social media pieces there. And then it actually has the activity prompts for you to be able to delegate, to, you know, kind of what you cover. And then again, this, I don't love that it comes in each independently, but it does kind of walk you through exactly what you need to do without those, that group of volunteers you're training. And I love this activity. And many of you mentioned this one. Um, that sticky note one. And then another way you can kind of have them practice with other volunteers, how they would make that ask to parents and caregivers to help them with club or community or shooting sports things, livestock judging things. Just those are a few examples. Project activity day. These can be good things for you to do too, as far as asking for help from your volunteers. And then you just, again, have them practice. So again, all these materials are here for you to take and use. And then everyone has that same ending slide where you can ask questions or they can share ideas too. And there are notes in the PowerPoints too, like some little facilitator notes, which is great for some of them. So that you kind of know those things or have a chance to kind of um, just use those. So again, I want you to explore these pieces and kind of talk with each other about, as you look around at these, what are some of the ways that you, what are some of the things you like from the different um, topic areas or domains? What is one activity um, that you could use with your volunteers? So we're gonna have you break into small groups. Megan's gonna put you in breakout rooms and please don't leave just because of that because this is a chance for you to chat with some other individuals across the state. And you're gonna be focused on one topic and you'll be able to see this. Um, we'll put this in the chat too for all of you. Um, and you have the PowerPoint access also. But room one's gonna talk about communications to organizations. So we'll break you into groups and we want you to discuss you know, or kind of take a look at the lessons in that section, discuss one that you think you might be able to do with your 4-H volunteers. And then I want you to pick one great idea to share with the larger group of something that you saw that you liked in there. And we're going to have um, that highlighted as we walk through these. So we're going to give you about eight, seven minutes in your small group to talk about these things in your breakout room, and then come back with that one great idea to share um, with our larger group. So you have seven ideas, seven minutes to talk. We'll give you about a minute to bring you back and wrap up. And then we'll have a couple of minutes to share. All right, Megan's okay, gonna, I'm gonna open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open all the rooms and I'll stop the recording while we're in the room. So the rooms are open now. And great, thank you. One great idea um, that you had, either open up your mic if that if you're willing to do that. One great idea or thing that you liked about the communications domain, something that you found in there you could use. Well, a lot of our mics weren't working, so we didn't have a whole lot of discussion, but we found um, we found an active listening self-assessment that we thought would work really well for people to um figure out what kind of listener they actually are and then um sarah had brought up one another thing of of playing phone um actually learn teaching kids how to verbalize on the phone instead of just texting so forth like that that's a great idea a great thing to teach those volunteers that they can take back communication is so important as a life skill for later on, even just calling to ask if they have to call a store and ask if they have an item, if it's not on the website, there's just all sorts of things that you need to know how to do. So great. I'm sorry your mics weren't working. That's not good. We need to get that problem solved. Some of them I think are worn out after the pandemic, it seems like. All right, room two, um, organizational skills. What was one great idea that that room um, 
found that you could use for your with your volunteers when you go back in your county? We all like the the plan of meetings and activities for the year. And I forget who said it, but they said from Williams County, they start it in the fall with their leaders council. So it sets the tone. And she pointed out a, a big benefit that I hadn't thought of. Um, if there's a skill that they are not as familiar with as a leader, give them the opportunity to learn it with others, and then they can take it to their 4-H clubs. That is excellent. Great. Yes, and I think a great, um, and I'm going to drop the link for that later, the 4-H Easy Materials have some really good planning activities that are online too as far as club meetings, but in those, in the lessons in the VRKC, you have that whole example of a club meeting or kind of planning for the year, and it does really help. That way, as a 4-H volunteer myself, you kind of know, okay, this volunteer or this parent or caregiver or youth is in charge of, you know, a lot of things for this meeting. We already have it planned, so we know what we're doing. It isn't that kind of like I used to call it the Saturday night scramble where you're trying to figure out what you're going to do for the club meeting on Sunday and you're running to town to buy things or whatever, asking people. So it just is a more peace of mind and it, it's a better learning experience for them too. So awesome. Great. I love the idea of having everyone kind of do that. And then hopefully they collectively go back and plan with their 4 Hers too and give them some decision-making opportunities. Great. How about program management? What did that group talk about or find us some great ideas? That was room three. Anyone willing to share? We didn't have a whole lot of discussions because we all missed the way beginning because we were taking a call or someone was in here. So we were oh, a shoot. little bit lost. So we're sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Did you get a chance to kind of check out these materials a little bit? Briefly, in that yes. area? Yep. Great. And the reason that the, the yellow is highlighted is because they are um, the ones that we're going to be highlighting at 4-H spring training um, out in Medora. We're going to cover that organizational structure of extension and kind of the use of the 4-H clover, some club management materials, and then behavior management. A lot of times our volunteers are like, my club has 50 youth in it. Things get a little wild. How do I positively help manage that along with my um, my club officers? So some good ideas in there to check out for that Rochelle, one. Rochelle, do you mean to share the screen? Oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. That would be very important for me to share the screen again. Goodness. Yeah. So with that one, great that we have highlighted there. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. And, Next as, group. and as a side note um, from what mm -hmm. Rochelle was saying yes. about spring training, so spring training for agents, specialists, and 4-H program assistants, um, so I know a registration um, is coming up due Friday, but so if you haven't registered on the registration, you'll see that we're going to have a share fair opportunity to share with your colleagues. And so we're excited to see you bring ideas of things that you've developed that kind of fit in those three areas that are highlighted. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, it can be an idea, a handout, just something so we can all kind of gather ideas from each other and share and use as those good ideas. So that's something to look forward to as well from learning from each other. Great. Thanks, Megan. Yes, thanks for remembering to talk about that. Um, room four, did you have educational design and delivery, some things you discovered that you really liked um, that you talked about in that room? I can report out for our group. Great, um, thanks. We noted a couple that we thought were kind of cool. Um, there's one on page 12, if any of you guys click on it, that's like the learning mindset activity. And so it's really just kind of kind of a little chart, like checklist, but it's only six questions. And we thought that that could be something that would be easily implemented that just kind of asks um, how people learn. Um, so we like that one. And then there's also um, a mindfulness um, eating one, of course, anything with food is always, always fun. Um, so we marked, we marked that one too, um, just getting people to slow down and think. And um, we just kind of thought that that was like a fun activity that would be, um, use and then being able to turn that into an experience um 
And then the very last page to um, on page 21, it's just like a 4-H quality checklist. We thought that that could be a really simple, easy handout to share with leaders to take to their meetings, just to kind of review. Um, basically, the checklist is identify areas where positive youth development is strong in the club. So then it kind of highlights um, just some cool, cool areas, just really quick, easy, immediately can be implemented. So just a few that we talked about in our group. Awesome. Thank you. Those that mindfulness one sounds wonderful. And yes, kind of looking through to see, do we have those key components in our club meeting or our group, whether it's shooting sports or whatever area it is, are we including those different pieces? Awesome. I'm glad you discovered those things. How about in the world of positive youth development? Was there one on group room five that you chatted about some of the different um, things that you found to be effective? It looks like one of my, the picture cut off one of my words there I'll have to fix. Um, I don't know if Julianne, you're there. You were taking some notes. Um, we talked about, I guess, uh, uh, times that we could maybe use the resources. I suggested maybe just like your 4-H council meetings, doing some activity at the beginning or the end. I know in this section, there was some stuff on um, so maybe the adult setting. leadership self-assessment. Yeah, that one. That might be a good one to do um, the beginning of the year, your 4-H year or something. Talk about where needs and um, fits are for different leaders and their skills. I don't know what else we covered. Those are the two notes that I had is the activity before the 4-H council meeting and the adult leadership self-assessment. I was looking at some of the handouts or the resources in the activity domain. Um, I did have one question. I Like there are some activities. One says Apple analogy. It sounds kind of interesting, but then it says the handout for it. It is in a separate document in the folder. How do you find stuff like that? There's a lot of information. I just had a hard time kind of navigating it. And I was, so did you see that listed in the, um, was it in the PowerPoint where it referenced it or was it in the actual? Uh... It referenced it in the PowerPoint and in the link that says positive youth development domain activities. Mm -hmm. And then when you're looking at the, looking at it in the domain activities, it says handout is in a, is a separate document in the folder. I just didn't so, know where to find it. Maybe. I know, you know, I think that was the domain where one of those, those, a couple of those things might have been missing. So if you make note, I will do that. I caught a couple other things too. Um, that so there are notes in the PowerPoint that give you some presenter notes, but you're right, those activity handouts, that handout should be part of it where they can fill it in. And I know like in the um for each uh, do, the the basic um, the domain that covers kind of the 4-H club meeting 4-H program management those handouts are included but I feel like with this one there are some pieces missing so let me ask if you put that in the chat I will make sure, sure. I will contact the people that coordinated this because I caught a couple things in a couple slides too again it's a bunch of individuals working from across the country on these in, out of the goodness of their heart. So there's still some things that need to be tweaked. So that's great. I will ask for those handouts. Yeah, I'll put the title of that one and there were a couple others that I <clears throat> couldn't find the handouts. I'll put them in the those chat. those specifically should be in the activities, um, in the activities um, handouts. So I apologize okay. for that. I will track those down. And I love the idea of um, Tessa that and Julianne that beginning of your 4-H council meeting. One of the nice things uh, when I was an agent was if uh, when we had council meetings, I tried, and I know some of you try to do that. You don't have a lot of time, but trying to give your volunteers tools or resources that they can use to take back to their clubs, back to their groups, um, whatever group it is that they're working with. Um, so they have something to do or something to use. That's just really nice to kind of highlight that. And in some counties, I know that's why more and more volunteers have come to council meetings if they do have something like that, that they can take away with them beyond just um, negotiating or navigating a, a premium 
levels or what you know some of those things so it's nice to have some of those tools so i will track those down too if you put those in the chat and see what's going on jen lobley is one of the volunteer specialists from maine who's been helping kind of organize these things so all right thank you how about that room six interpersonal characteristics some good ideas you found there we well not we well amber and i talked about when um you looked through the different activities that are involved, that the pepper experiment was pretty cool. Um, and I know that she had found something other than that, but we talked about the breakdown of the different, um, what do you call them? The patience, the flexibility and all that, how you can break it down and how they're listed separate. So you can use them as a resource altogether, or you can break them down if you see somebody struggling. That is what's really nice. And just depending on what your, how much time you have. And yes, that pepper experience is a huge hit. Um, we've done that with some character counts things in other places. That's a great one to do. Very minimal resources, very inexpensive to be able to do that with volunteers. And again, it's one you can take back to your club meetings too. So awesome. I love that you pointed out that you can do them collectively or separately. And this is one sometimes we see, even with counts, this might be a good one to highlight with your councils because at times that patience, flexibility, care for others is what um, those challenges they face just even within that group. So it's kind of a, a sneaky way to get those in, that information in there too. So, well, thank you for being willing to share and talk about all those and kind of look through things um, together. With that, just wanted to highlight that, again, as we talked about, these are really a framework for volunteer trainings um, that you can do in different ways, whether it's a longer bringing them together for, like Lindsay mentioned, a painting party, a night together, and maybe having a couple, pulling a couple pieces of these. In no way can you cover them all um, at once. We talked about this year, we really wanted to focus on the 4-H program management piece um, to highlight for you at spring training but you can choose whatever you think your volunteers kind of need and just pull that one piece that you can sneak in there. They can also, if you give them, I have the two page overview or handout in your, whoops, I have my screen. Can't see, it's in the Google Drive. You can give that to the volunteers and just say, are there some pieces you'd like us to cover here? Or even these lesson plans are ones that they can take and teach to each other too, if you have that opportunity. So that way they can request, you know, I feel like, we are having some issues with behaviors in our 4-H clubs. How can we um, address those? And you can say, Lloyd, do I have the lesson for you? Um, so they can kind of request those things too. And then finally, it's a framework for us to, to provide professional development. Like last year, we covered the communications domain a little bit in 4-H spring training. This year, we're going to tackle that too. So it helps us here at the state level. Our goal is that across the country, our 4-H volunteers are getting trained in um, in the same kind of materials, the same kind of content. That's always been the goal. So that if they move, we literally had a Minot volunteer that I know move from Minot. She was one of Emily Burkett and Paige's volunteers to where I live over in Minnesota in Clay County. Um, that you have that volunteer trained in the same kind of, they might not be identical, but these materials are the same so that they're kind of hearing the same message and building some of the same skills. So that's the goal. One more thing I wanted to mention, I noticed there's something in the chat here. Oh, I love the Apple. Yep, thanks for putting that in there. I'll find that handout. So one other thing I wanted to mention that some of you um, that have been around for a little bit, like last year, uh, there was a great educational opportunity or professional development that was free that was offered by the Southern Region Volunteer Specialists who have a position similar to mine, or some of them work in Megan's world too. Um, they offered some webinars with resources. And Megan, if you're willing to drop that into the chat too, they have a separate Google Drive with pre-recorded Zooms and PowerPoints and handouts that cover how you link the whole 4-H thriving model with VRKC. Now that can blow some of your minds if you're new, that's a lot. But um, they provided some really good webinars and you heard, you can hear for some different from some different voices. Some of you participated. You could take a peek at the PowerPoints, but they really did a nice job talking about 
you know, how does communicating effectively or teaching our volunteers to communicate effectively really help support thriving or having our youth thrive? Well, obviously, if they're communicating positively with our youth and making them feel included and involved in their 4-H experience, they're going to have a more successful or a more positive 4-H experience. So they did a nice job connecting those. And I just wanted to share that those resources, some of you have asked if they're still out there, and they are, and they're archived so you can go back. I know it's hard to sometimes do that, but just even take a peek at those. And they're all in one Google Drive that you can kind of go back to when you have a chance. So wanted to mention that. And just a few more things, and I know some of you put that in the chat, where to get more volunteer information. We just have a couple of minutes here. And again, you have this PowerPoint, so you can go back and everything is hot linked. I would invite you, and we haven't come up with locations yet, um, we rotate around the state and do November North Dakota 4-H volunteer project trainings for your volunteers out there, which is a three-hour experience they can come to. We're looking for some new host sites this for this November. If you're interested in hosting, let me know because um, we need some new ones. Cindy and others that are on here hosted last year. They're a lot of fun. Uh, where we all can come together as extension professionals and volunteers to learn together about projects. Um, spring training. One thing I wanted to highlight is we have a volunteer specialist website that has a lot of different volunteer resources. One of the pieces that I've you've heard me talk about if you've been around a while is the 4-H Easy, the volunteer training for community club volunteers. There's some videos, some handouts. Um, that are some good, even our North Dakota 4-H games and activities, our recreation guide is on there. So um, kind of a good training piece that's additional for our volunteers. Uh, the resource hub for you to find out more information about how to work with your volunteers. Um, also, National Volunteer website. Wanted to just touch on there is a National Extension Conference on Volunteerism coming up in 2025. So you have a couple of years to plan in Portland, Maine. That's a beautiful place to go for professional development. And they are taking proposals now. So if you have a great idea for a proposal or a session you want to do, um, please think about that. Some other things you're a lot of you ask me, where do I find that value of volunteer time? Because it changes and continues to update. The independent sector keeps track of that. And just an example, like in North Dakota, um, our value of volunteer time is around $28, $29 an hour for your volunteer. Every hour your volunteer gives us is around $29 an hour. That if they were working for us, that's what they would get paid. So it's pretty cool to kind of tabulate that. Some other links, and again, you have this PowerPoint, so you can go directly there. So with that, what kind of questions? That's my 4 -H -ers. They're got They're getting older. I told Megan I have to update this one. Uh, the one down here, he is uh, 20, so he's no longer. He hasn't been in 4-H for a while, but I need to update Emily's pictures. But um, questions that you have for me about these resources or materials or comments or other things you'd like to see highlighted for your 4-H volunteers, maybe on a webinar. So have about three minutes if you have any questions or comments or great ideas that you have. All right, well, if you don't have any. I hope, thank you for jumping on and exploring these materials with me. I am here for you. If you need anything else, please ask, email Megan too. We hope to see you on the next ones. And we hope to see a lot of you at 4-H spring training next year too. I hope you use these VRK materials and resources with, with your volunteers. And thanks. I hope you have a wonderful lunch too. Okay. Megan, do you have any wrap up? Thanks for joining us, everybody. And if you weren't here at the beginning, um, I did a little advertisement for our April um, webinar Wednesday, which is going to be on Friday, April 19th, Erin Bain from American Income Life Insurance. She's going to be giving a refresher about what our policy provides and those um, special insurances you might take out from your county. And so if you have any scenarios or questions for Erin that you think of now, send me an email because I want to start collecting those and get them to her ahead of time. And that'll be the announcements. 
in the newsletter. The newsletter goes out this Friday and I'll send another email about um, that as a reminder. So just keep, keep in mind April 19th. So, and um, thanks for um, joining us and thank you, Rochelle. This was great. And I, I really like these materials because it's all there for you. You don't have to recreate the wheel. Like there's activities, PowerPoints, everything. So I'm um, just so glad that this has been created and Rochelle could share this with us. So thank you. See y'all again. Bye. Bye. Thank you.